So back in 2006, the former editor-in-chief of the British Medical Journal, Dr. Richard Smith, published a research paper entitled Peer Review, A Flawed Process at the Heart of Science in Journals, where he documented how he and his team submitted several studies for peer review in which they deliberately inserted major errors and not one single science journal managed to pick up all the errors, and some of them picked up none. This led he and his team to conclude that we have little evidence on the effectiveness of peer review, but we have considerable evidence on its defects. It's almost useless for detecting fraud, something of a lottery, prone to bias, and easily abused. Echoing his views in 2015 was the editor-in-chief of The Lancet, the case against science is straightforward. Much of the scientific literature, perhaps half, may simply be untrue. And then if we dig a little bit deeper, we do have some significant evidence to further corroborate their claims. In this publication over here from 2012 in Nature, for example, they went ahead and they wanted to fact-check the accuracy of 53 major peer-reviewed landmark studies. But what they found, guys, was that only six of them could be proven to be scientifically authentic, which in their own words was a shocking result. Now, if that's not crazy enough for you, in 2017, a fake science paper about midichlorians from the science fiction movie Star Wars was unbelievably accepted for publication by four science journals. (laughs) Now, as insane as that all is, Accidents do happen, right? Human beings are obviously and inescapably flawed, so naturally much of the science that gets produced as well will likewise be flawed. But what's particularly concerning and dangerous, guys, is that throughout history, the scientific establishment has been easily corrupted. In the past, for example, Big Tobacco used well-respected doctors, scientists, and medical journals to deceive the public. We see this from 1912, for example, claiming Craven cigarettes are, and I quote, the purest and best according to research, from the prestigious science journal The Lancet. This news article over the year from 1932 as well, claiming that these university studies prove that old gold is, and I quote, the best cigarette. And in this publication from the American Medical Association in 1954, which falsely claimed to be independent, suggesting that Kent cigarettes are the safest to smoke. Some of the trusted doctors and scientists that we now know to have been on Big Tobacco's payroll include Professor Frederick Seitz, he was the 17th president of the National Academy of Sciences, Dr. William Gary Flem, he was the former chief science advisor to the FDA and he also advised the World Health Organization, Professor Gio Batigori, who was the former deputy director of the US National Cancer Institute, and many, many other doctors and scientists, many of which we will never ever know because they had a policy of concealing their financial influence. Of course, most people would like to naively believe that this scientific corruption is just a thing of the past, but the sad truth, guys, is that it's actually worse now than ever before in history. And although this behavior can be observed in just about every single profitable industry on the planet, it is the most common, deceptive, and dangerous in the big pharma vaccine industry. To give you some insider perspective, I'd like to just quickly quote the former editor-in-chief of the New England Journal, Marcia Agnell, in which she writes, this industry uses its wealth and power to co-opt every institution that might stand in its way, including the US Congress, the FDA, academic medical centers, and the medical profession itself. And some of the companies she names, guys, in her article are actually currently producing coronavirus vaccines. This includes Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, GlaxoSmithKline, AstraZeneca, and Sanofi. And if we investigate these companies' track records just a little bit closer, what do we find? Pfizer, fined for a decade of bribery. Johnson & Johnson, involved in bribery for at least 13 years. GlaxoSmithKline, slapped with a record $3 billion fine for bribery. AstraZeneca, faking conferences to bribe doctors. And Sanofi, bribery scandal spending more than a decade. And just like the tobacco industry, they have a policy of concealing their financial links to these doctors and scientists to make them appear as being independent. If we keep digging, we also find they have a history of conflicts of interest with vaccine advisors to the World Health Organization, also the CDC, which has a very well-documented history of conflicts of interest when it comes to approving these vaccines, the FDA, which has a very disturbing history of revolving doors with the big pharma vaccine industry, and then the NHS, which unsurprisingly has a habit of concealing their financial links to the big pharma vaccine industry. And if that's not worrisome enough, guys, they also finance just about every major science journal that you can think of. In fact, the editor-in-chief of The Lancet claims, medical journals have become an important but under-recognized obstacle 
to scientific truth telling. Journals have devolved into information laundering operations for the pharmaceutical industry. Now, I want to make it very clear, guys. I am not anti science. I am anti science corruption. And after all of the obsessive research I've done into current events surrounding COVID 19, which culminated in that very lengthy five hour presentation I gave back in August, I can tell you that the pandemic we should really be concerned with is the pandemic of ignorance. It's the pandemic of fear, of deception, of censorship, and it's the pandemic of the corruption of science. <laughs>